Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with one of the most heavily armed regions of the world, the Middle East, and a proposal from President Bush to somehow make it less so. After two months of trying to get the Arabs and Israelis to talk to one another, and with precious little to show for it, Mr. Bush has shifted gears and decided to concentrate on the vast array of weapons that Arabs and Israelis have. If they won't make peace, make it more difficult for them to make war. We begin with our White House correspondent, Brit Hume. The president used a graduation address at the Air Force Academy to make a further attempt to turn the U.S. victory in the Gulf War into an enduring contribution to stability in the Middle East. Mr. Bush announced a plan to curb sharply the weapons trade that has made the Middle East an armed camp. Halting the proliferation of conventional and unconventional weapons in the Middle East while supporting the legitimate need of every state to defend itself will require the cooperation of many states in the region and around the world. The president's proposal calls on the five leading weapons exporting countries to restrain arms sales of all kinds to the Middle East. That would mean cooperation by the U.S., Britain, France, the Soviet Union, and the Chinese, for whom weapons are the major export product. The main focus is weapons of mass destruction, nuclear, which only Israel has in the Middle East, as well as chemical and biological. Mr. Bush wants to forbid their sale and the sale of missiles to launch them but he would continue to permit conventional weapons sales deemed necessary for self-defense. Mr. Bush also urges the countries of the Middle East themselves to agree to a region-wide ban on the production and acquisition of nuclear and chemical weapons and materials. He said it wouldn't be easy, and the rest of his speech, devoted to a defense of his military budget, suggested why, though in a way the president probably did not intend. My greatest responsibility is national defense, and I will veto any bill that doesn't support and sustain my defense program. Those Middle Eastern countries have defense programs too, and they would seem no less likely to oppose efforts to interfere with them than Mr. Bush would be to veto a bill from Congress that interferes with his. Brit Hume, ABC News, Colorado Springs. The economic incentive to just leave things as they are is enormous. The arms trade is a $45 billion a year business with the U.S. and the Soviet Union its biggest sellers and the nations of the Middle East among its most important buyers. As ABC's John Mukethi reports tonight, the war in the Persian Gulf may just whet everyone's appetite for more. This was a weapons supermarket where all the best and destructive hardware was on sale to just about anyone who could pay. The hottest items at this show in Singapore were those that were used on the winning side in the Gulf War, British, French, and American made. The war that led President Bush to conclude that now is the time to control weapon sales has convinced many others that now is the time to do just the opposite, to buy and sell more. The Soviet Union has just signed a deal to sell its top-of-the-line MiG-29 fighter to Iran. The Iranians are also believed to be working on a deal with China to jointly produce a new fighter aircraft and tank. Whatever the president was saying today, the U.S. has been aggressively doing some marketing of its own. It has promised to sell new F-16 fighters to Egypt. There is a proposal for new F-15s to Saudi Arabia and talk of additional sales to Turkey, the United Arab Emirates, and Israel. But some industry analysts believe that the president's speech today signals a drastic change in administration plans. If we do this uh, today and next week uh, sell uh, $15 billion worth of arms to Saudi Arabia, this will be seen as hypocritical and, and undermining our own policy. But the President and Secretary of State have stressed that selling arms to our friends, to so-called responsible governments, is not the same as selling to others. The Soviet Union and China, of course, have different friends, and that's where the Bush plan may well run into trouble. John McWethy, ABC News, the State Department. In a moment, the other news. San Francisco is going to tax professional sports so as to pay for school athletic programs. On the American agenda tonight, what Kentucky is doing for people on Medicaid and baseball as it should be heard.